Today, Monday, June 29th, the Catholic Church celebrates the Solemnity of St. Peter and St. Paul. The Church honors these great saints together because of their important role in the early Church. St. Peter led the efforts to evangelize the children of Israel, and St. Paul, through his experiences of journeying throughout the Mediterranean, would eventually lead the efforts to evangelize the Gentiles, or those who are not of the Jewish faith or Jewish ancestry. And to be completely fair, these two are not the only ones doing the work of evangelization. The other 11 apostles and many others helped both St. Peter and St. Paul in their respected efforts to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to others. But as we read through the Acts of the Apostles during the Easter season, the leadership and the importance of St. Peter and St. Paul cannot be denied. And the readings for today highlight both St. Peter and St. Paul. And each of these three readings would be worthy of our reflection. But I decided after prayer that I would focus on the second reading, which comes from the second letter of St. Paul to St. Timothy. And the selection for Mass today comes from the fourth and final chapter, where St. Paul is giving his final charge to the much younger St. Timothy. The selection reads as follows. I, Paul am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord the just judge will award to me on that day, and not only to me but to all who have longed for his appearance. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. St. Paul is not writing these words to St. Timothy out of pride. He's sending these words out of an abundance of hope. Because St. Paul knew that his trials, persecutions, and hardships truly brought him to a deeper and more abiding trust in Jesus Christ. The Lord did bring him through so many things. So he had hope that he would finish the race and that he would complete the task that Christ had put on his heart from the very beginning of his conversion. And I believe that my heart and mind were drawn to these words because I believe all of us would like to say the same thing about ourselves that St. Paul says in regards to himself. Because when we all like to say that we've competed well, when we all like to say that we've kept the faith, when all of us at the end of our lives like to say that we fulfilled what the Lord has asked of us, and maybe as you reflect on that, you're probably thinking something like myself. Well, I'm nothing like St. Paul. My life is nothing like St. Paul's life. So why would these words apply? Well, I think we have to look at St. Paul's conversion to understand how they do apply. Because as St. Paul makes this statement to St. Timothy, I have no doubt that he remembered in his mind his conversion. I'm sure he remembered how he consented to the stoning death of St. Stephen. And I'm sure he remembers that his conversion happened on the road to Damascus where he was going to go and put Christians in chains. So these words of St. Paul were not said by a perfect man. These words were said by a man who had been perfected by his Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Likewise, St. Peter was not a perfect man. He too was perfected by his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, we are sinners like St. Paul and St. Peter, and we must commit to living out our faith each and every day in order to come to the same statement of hope that we heard from St. Paul in the reading I shared with you today. Yes, we will fail, but like St. Paul and St. Peter, we must simply recommit to following the footsteps of the Lord wherever it may lead us. For these two great apostles, it meant that they would die for their faith. 
but they faced the end of their lives with the confidence that the Lord was with them in their suffering. For us, whenever we finish our race, we know that the Lord will be with us as well and that he'll provide every grace so that we can have the same confidence, the same hope that St. Paul had in the reading we heard today. Please know my continued thoughts and prayers for all of you. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. Thank you.